So let's have a look at the code uh, I have implemented to solve that lab. So the first thing we need to do is we need to read uh, the eProcess address for our recovery thread. So we know we leaked the case thread address. So we can just add the process uh, offset inside the case thread structure and we will be able to leak one eProcess pointer, which in this case is the process uh, associated with our exploits. And then we can call the find eProcess code mode prim function that's going to basically start from this eProcess and find the um, process with the PID4. And so we know it's going to be our system eProcess. And then from this uh, eProcess address, we can just access the token pointer by reading the keyword from the eProcess plus the offset to the actual token. And we save that. And here, optionally, what we do is we use the system token pointer and we update the ref counts. So in the Windows world, it's going to be the pointer count and the handle count. Basically, the pointer count is the number of direct kernel mode pointer references and handle count is the number of indirect references via handle, both from userland and from kernelland. And basically what we do is we take the system token pointer we leaked and we know the lower byte, at least um, half of it, is actually not part of the actual pointer. So we take the adjusted pointer and just um, remove the lower part. And then we have this pointer to the token structure, but we want to modify the object header that is before the token structure in memory. And so we subtract the object header structure size and we get an object header. And so from there, we can modify the pointer count. So we just read the value uh, into a username variable and then we add two, for instance. Potentially, you can add one only that should be enough or you can add 100 if you want. But yeah, just be careful not to add too much because if you wrap around, then it can be problematic. But yeah, I guess if you don't run that many times, the exploit too is, is perfect. So we just update point account and handle account the same way. And finally, we update the pointer uh, to the token in our eProcess. So we take our eProcess, um, we just read the previous token before we override it in case we want to restore it later. Just a good habit to do this kind of thing before you corrupt memory, just to save it. And then we override it uh, with the actual system token pointer. Okay, so now it's time to actually run the exploit. So I did push the privilege escalation lab executable on the target VM and yeah, for this lab, I won't actually use the debugger. I mean, I've attached it but I, I didn't set any breakpoints. And um, yeah, we can see the cmd.exe has the IE user, normal user, uh, and I'm just gonna run the exploit now. So we won the race condition. So we leave the addresses. If you want, you can even comment this uh, message so you don't have to hit a key. Um, yeah, we see it spawned the shell just by saying Microsoft Windows. It's the text for the CMD. And we can see in Process Explorer that our shell is NT authority system, which I can confirm with who am I. And if I exit the exploit, it kills it and I can rerun it. Yeah, and so on. I mean, feels good, isn't it? Okay, last time.
Ah, interesting. So this could happen. I'm not sure exactly why, but sometimes it hangs and it doesn't actually let me exit the process for some reason. So in this case, I can just kill it and it should just be stable still. And I can respawn a CMD and try again. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.